put this little six-year-old girl on the spot and make her come up here today? Come up here, Faith. You bet. Faith, come here. She was part of the dig. <laughs> Catherine, were, Catherine, were you up here during the excavation? <laughs> Faith's mother, Jean, which is Jerry's sister, came from Alaska and homeschooled this little, what, were you six? Somewhere around so about there. six months while we did this dig. And so she's very much of a part of the dig. And I really haven't asked her what she remembered about it. So you may have questions for her. Also, she left her husband, Jerry, who is in the back behind in Alaska when she was here. And uh, so Jerry's here with us today, Faith's dad. And we also have another niece, Catherine's with us. And then our daughter, Sue, is here today. Yep. And Susan graduated from college the year we did this and took off from California, so she kind of missed this adventure. Well, I was here for a lot of the cleaning up. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what you're doing. Well, we'd like to talk to you a little bit and, and, and answer questions. If you have questions, if you don't have questions, we'll lecture you quite a bit. <laughs> and then you'll ask questions. Or be, glad, or be sorry you didn't. Does anybody got questions to start with? How many have been here before? Yeah. So where are you guys from? Leavenworth. Where? Leavenworth. Oh, Leavenworth. I was talking to them, but that's okay. <laughs> Just west of Minneapolis. You've not been from jail, are you? <laughs> Minneapolis. Just west of Minneapolis, yeah. Okay, we're glad to have you here. St. Louis for us. St. Louis. Where? St. Louis. Good. Well, you got a nice little museum. You've been to the one under the arch up there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Well, why don't you talk to a little bit? Well, um, we are now about two-thirds on display. They tell us we have probably another 15 years of work yet. And I can remember when we dug the boat, when we got the hole filled in for the farmer and, and uh, began to think about museums and artifacts, I can remember saying, boy, oh, this looks like a two-year job. <laughs> Here we are, 24 years later. You know, 24 years ago, right here on this date, we were filling the hole. Yeah. It took three weeks to fill that hole in, and then we began to think about museums and artifacts, and, and like I say, we had no idea what we are getting into, but you know, historically, there is absolutely nothing that will compare to a sunken steamboat full of cargo to tell you what life was like when that boat sank. The variety of the things that have come off the Arabia, you know, touch just about every aspect of life. And it's not just food and clothes and tools to work with. It's tons of little things, pins and needles and buttons and thimbles and pocket knives and toothbrushes and well, all kinds of things. Well, handled underwear. <laughs> <laughs> you ever thought of self saving some of that since 1856? <laughs> well, you're going to see some of that today. Yeah. Well, Yes, anyway. ma'am. Were any parts of the dig physically dangerous? We didn't know that at the time. <laughs> <laughs> when I look at the film, or, you know, the old pictures of the side of the boat, the side wheel, or, right. you know, side of the boat out there that was leaning over like this, and they were digging all the dirt down around the bottom of it, you know. Someone asked us after we opened if we were worried about cholera or something like that. You know, as never much entered our minds. <laughs> it never entered our minds, but the perfume was still good, the pickles were still good, you know, so why couldn't the cholera have still been good if it was down there? So, you know, we didn't stop to think about that kind of thing. Yes, sir. What was it that originally led you to the Arabia? It sounds like you were doing a lot of research. What was David, actually? He was, <laughs> no, he was one of our group. Uh, we had, uh, he had actually started Bye -bye. Well, we, you know, we found six boats, and we were going to dig one right after the other. And the, the Arabia was the closest one to home. Yeah. And, uh, and the, the farmer next, was willing. Okay. Yeah, and, yeah. The, the next one was Oric, Missouri, uh, which was a boat called the Twilight. Yep. And another group dug that boat about 10, 12 years ago, and it didn't have much on it, and they everything spent, they found. Well, you could get in the back of a pickup truck. Uh, yeah, uh, good they thing spent we didn't almost, start on that one. almost two million dollars to dig it up, too. How so, much? So we're glad we didn't pick that one. Had a good name, though. Yeah. yeah. You know, you wonder how we get started. That you kind of ask yourself that question. Well, Bob came into my office one day, 
uh, a couple of years before we started this, and he said, I met, I went to Florida and I met this guy named Mel, Mel Fisher. Have you heard of Mel Fisher? <laughs> yes, and so had I. And he said, I've got, I've got, uh, I've got these two contracts here, and for $2,000 a piece, we can be part of an excavation. This guy is going to find a boatload of gold. Right? And I said, well, Bob, I'm on my way to Alaska. I was going up to visit Faith and, and uh, Jerry up there. And, and uh, I said, as soon as I get back, uh, if you still want to do it, uh, if you it would, up. Uh, go ahead and, <laughs> and go ahead and do it yourself, and I'll catch up when I get back. Well, I was, got on the airplane to come back, and they gave me a newspaper, and I was looking at this newspaper, and the whole front page, just about the whole newspaper, it had a picture of Mel Fisher with gold around his neck and, and the bars of gold in both hands and diamonds and all things. I was afraid to come home, actually. <laughs> so next time he came into my office, he brought David with him. And David said, I've been in this guy's basement, and he's looking for something treasure on the Missouri. And he says, I think we can find it. And are you kidding me? Am I going to turn him down at that point? <laughs> well, we, uh, we went for that and, and decided to do it ourselves. And thank goodness we did. You know, Bill Fisher's what been sued 250 oh, yeah. times. He's, and, uh, uh, and, uh, well, but how much did you have to invest? Uh, it was it all your money, or did you have other people invest with you? I remember, my wife is here. <laughs> <laughs> well, he came home and told me they'd sat around the table, and each of them could put ten thousand dollars in, and they could do it for that. That's okay. Right. Go ahead, Bob. Tell us that only done. lasted us three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Got us down below the deck of the boat, and we were able to prove cargo. And and anyway, we were we were four feet over the deck of the boat when when uh, we ran out of money. And uh, I can overnight one night the water dropped about four inches and left a circle in the sand between the two paddle wheels. And that circle in the sand turned out to be that barrel of dishes. We took those dishes home to Jerry's house and set them up kind of nice and washed them all off and invited our rich friends in. <laughs> and sold 15% of our stock, raised $150,000 in one day because of that barrel of dishes. That lasted us about a month. They got, got us... very friendly with the bankers, if you want to know the truth. <laughs> <laughs> we were then, though, down below the deck of the boat, about a foot or so, we were able to proof cargo. And our banker was impressed out in Independence. And in increments of $25,000, we'd go back to that bank every $25,000, sign a new note. When we opened up the museum three years later, we'd spend a million four. And back then, a million four was a ton of money. And uh, anyway, it took us 10 years to get out of debt. And of course, we have you folks to thank for that. And like Jerry says, you know, there was absolutely no stimulus money on this project. You know, we tried for that stimulus money one time, and we're, and we're tickled to death that we didn't get it. Because because uh, if we had, guess what? Guess who would have controlled it by now? It wouldn't have been us. And, and so we appreciate you coming. And let me tell you one one little story, and then, and then I'll answer your question. But, uh, we uh, we had decided to build this museum, and, and so Bob and, and, and Greg and David and I and and David Trail got together and we hired an architect to draw this up for us. And, and he come, met with us, and, and we, we talked to him, told him what we wanted, and he worked for us about two weeks. And he came back and he said, uh, I quit. <laughs> and we said, you quit? And yeah, he said, I quit. When you guys make up your mind what you want, come and tell me, and if you still want me, I'll, I'll draw it up. And what, uh, what we hadn't realized, we each one had a different idea of what we wanted the museum to, to be in and it looked like. So we, uh, we had a meeting then, and we broke up, and, and uh, we went to different areas of the United States to look. My wife and I went to the California area and went up and down the coast, and Bob went back to Florida or somewhere, and David went to, uh, to the East Coast, anyway, all around. And we videoed every museum that we could find, you know, that would let us take pictures. And, and one unique thing we found out among all museums that we visited, and we visited a lot of them, uh, was what, what do you think it might have been? None of them make a profit. <laughs> None of them. We're a private individual. We can't even we can't even uh, get volunteers to work for it. We can't let them work for us because we have to pay them at least minimum wage by, by government rules because we are a private company. And so here we are with all of our money invested, and we're going to build a museum that don't make money. 
No, it wasn't a fun day that day. <laughs> anyway, thank goodness we did fill the museum. We did hire the architect back. David built the whole thing in his, his basement first. And then the architect came and, and grew from that. He bought it and built it out of balsa wood and that kind of thing. And, and we can move the walls and the windows and things. So anyway, that, that's, how, that's how the whole thing developed. But thanks to you guys, uh, it's been profitable since the day we opened the door. We learned to make lucite things. We learned to clean. We learned yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a lot no, of we things still are. we learned. Uh, you have one question. How many gallons of diesel did you guys go through on the, on the day? You know what? Eight hundred dollars a day. Eight hundred dollars a day. How many gallons? That was eighty-six prices. Listen, you wouldn't believe this, but we had a ten-thousand-gallon tank, and <laughs> and every four days the, the tanker would come up and fill it up. And that was for yeah. how many months? Yeah. Well, for we almost had almost four months. We had twenty pumps running, twenty-four hours a day, and each pump had a gener. No, each four four pumps had a generator. Uh, well, each pump was 30 horsepower, and uh, we had a generator for four of them, and uh, five generators running 24 hours a day. Yeah. 20 pumps pumping, uh, how, many, how many cubic feet a minute? Uh, uh, 1,000 gallons a minute. 1,000 gallons a minute. Yeah. Enough water to supply all of Blue Springs and, and uh, Independence. Faith spent a lot of her time in the commissary when we were bringing yes, in did. the dirty stuff, so she got to see a lot of the dirt. Yes. Yeah, I That's called my right. sister who was in was in in Alaska, and it was. Uh, I said, "Sis, I need somebody to come down here and help me. Have you got time to do it? If I send you a ticket," she said, "Do me a favor, send me a ticket. It's sixty below zero here." <laughs> <laughs> so I did, and she came and stayed, and and, and she helped catalog and and, and check in the items as. If we brought them into to, to our uh, laboratory there, yes, ma'am. So was it really just a matter of bringing it out and getting it cleaned off and? and it did stabilize, and then we, then we put it in storage and kept uh, kept it from deteriorating any further. So what about like the fabrics and or, the organics stuff? are in a big freezer. So that that's what was that kept haven't in the gone through preservation. Leather, rubber, uh, and Anything fabrics. We have two prefab homes, by the way. You bet you didn't know that. <laughs> we have prefab homes back then, but we have not put them up yet. Lost the instruction. I call it the cri <laughs> this was the crisis to crisis to crisis project. You got to get it out of the ground. We got to get out of here. Then too. you got to stabilize it, and we then you got to find a place to put it. You yeah. know, and, it, and the crisis is just keep going. <laughs> he said. He said we could have another question or two. So. Anybody got any more questions? Was, was it actually found on the Kansas side or in Parkville? Actually, Kansas. it was on the Kansas side. It sank in Missouri, actually. But then, it, then the, we found the it in came, Kansas. The river moved. And the river moved yeah. away from so it. So it sank, it was on the Missouri side. Well, yeah. it was on the river. Missouri, 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 Missouri. River. The state river. line, the state line moved with the river. Yeah, whenever uh, the when our boat sank, uh, the 110 acres that it was on, I mean, the it was on 35 acres of ground. And by the time we got to it, it was on 110 acres, same piece of ground. It, he just, he, he gained a lot of ground. The judge gained ground without buying it. Yeah. And it's Parkville. Yeah, it's yeah. straight south Well, it's across, across the, river. the river from Parkville. It's in Kansas City, Kansas. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you were traveling 635. Yes, ma'am. Did you find any of those whiskey barrels? Yeah. Well, do you want to answer that? <laughs> no. That's not a girl question. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. <laughs> 